The other day I decided I wanted to put together a palette using only shades of green. For years green was a colour I avoided using in my work, but recently I've become more and more inspired by it. And the way it seems to inspire me the most is when I can see many different shades of green all laid out together, which is what gave me the idea for this greens palette. In this video I'll share the process of putting the palette together, which greens I've decided to include, and I'll also experiment with mixing my own shade of green using Daniel Smith's Lemon Yellow mixed with various greens from my collection. But first I'll need to swatch all of the greens I have so that I can clearly see how they actually look on paper before I decide which ones are going to be included in my palette. Okay, so here they are all swatched out. Um, this is just a very rough worksheet, so it's not gonna look very attractive, but I do think that the greens all look so stunning together. This is what I mean when I say it really inspires me to see all of the different shades of green all in one place. This makes me want to use them much more than if I just see greens in a palette with other colors. I don't know why this is. Anyway, let's go through them and I'll tell you which ones I think I'm going to include in the palette and which ones won't be going in the palette. In an ideal world, I'd be putting them all in the palette, but um, I've got limited space. This little palette can hold 14 half pans. And as I have one full pan, which is the Roman Schmall Green Earth, um, I can only have 12 other colours, so 12 other half pans. Um, I want the Roman Schmall Green Earth, it's this one by the way, 
It's really nice mid green, very natural looking. I really want that to go in this palette because I bought it several months ago and it was bought as a pan like this. I don't even know whether Roman Schmoll do tube paints actually, but yeah, I bought this pan loving the colour, but it didn't quite fit in with any of my other palettes, so that's why it isn't in one at the moment. So I really want to put it in this one because it'll be perfect for this one. So yeah, we've got to narrow this down to 12 other colours. So I think starting at the top here, um, we have the Daniel Smith Fuchsite the Schmincke Horridan Viridian and the Daniel Smith Amazonite. Now these three are kind of similar. Um, I think I'm going to keep the Fuchsite and keep the Amazonite because they're a little bit different from each other whereas these two are quite similar. So the Viridian is going to go in another palette I have. I absolutely love the Viridian. I love this granulation that you can see here as well. I think for this palette, this one is going to go and these two are going to stay because I can't have three that are so similar. Um, moving on to the next one. This is the Windsor & Newton Windsor Green Blue Shade. That's definitely going to be included because that's a stunning colour. I think it provides a nice contrast to the other more natural colours and the darker colours. So that's definitely staying. The Dana Smith Thalo Turquoise, strictly speaking, I guess this isn't really a green, but it's a very greenish blue and I think it works so nicely with the others as well, a bit like this one. So that's staying. The Schmincke Horridan Prussian Green, I love this colour and I know I'm going to use it, it will have to go into another palette, but it's too blue to go in this palette. This one's definitely not going to go in the greens palette, um, especially as it's sort of similar to the Thalo turquoise, but it's, I kind of think of this one as being more of a green, and this one, even though it says Prussian green, to me, and I know to lots of you when I swatched this in another video, you were saying that it just looks blue to you, and it really does, I mean, this isn't just on camera. So, I don't know why it's called Prussian green, but I do love the colour and it's going to be something that I know I'll use because this will really fit in well with my landscapes. So he will have to go in another palette. On the next row, we have the Daniel Smith Sap Green. Lovely, so different to the others, a bit more of a yellowish green. You'll notice that a lot of these are greyish greens or blue greens because they're the ones that I tend to go with usually. But um, I really do love this colour and I think it works so well with the others. So that's definitely staying. The Schmincke Horridam Chromium Oxide Green is definitely staying. Their Cobalt Green Dark is definitely staying. That is a beautiful colour. That's actually in my main palette as well. But it'll work really well in this one. The Schmincke Horridam Forest Blue, I know it's called Forest Blue but it's really quite green. And this is one of my all time favorite colors. So this has to go in this palette. Um, the Daniel Smith Rare Green Earth is going to stay. Their Zwasite is going to stay with this lovely granulation. It has amazing texture, this paint. And the Schmincke Horridan Perylene Green is staying too. So what are we up to? We've got one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. The Roman Schmall, which is taking up two spaces. <laughs> so that takes us up to 13. So we can basically choose one of my experimental greens. Now, I just did a few mixes, the ones that I thought would be quite interesting. So here I mixed lemon yellow with perylene green, which creates quite a nice colour actually. But I felt that it was a little bit too similar to these ones here. I know it's lighter, but I kind of felt it wasn't different enough. I wanted something that was really going to be quite different. Um, so the next one along is the Lemon Yellow and Zwasite. By the way, I'm using Daniel Smith's Lemon Yellow, if I haven't mentioned that already. So this is the Daniel Smith Lemon Yellow and the Daniel Smith Zwasite. This I absolutely love. I'm going to bring it up close so you can have a look. It just creates a really dusky greenish yellow with amazing granulation and texture and I think this is what I'm looking for. 
Um, the next one's along. These were mixers with the Daniel Smith Sap Green and the Lemon Yellow. So I added a little bit more yellow for this one here, as you can see. And they're really nice, but they're too similar to the Sap Green up here. So they weren't different enough to be included, I think, in the palette. And this one, I really don't like this one. <laughs> this one was Lemon Yellow and the Schmincke Horrid and Viridian, and it's made a really bright kind of Granny Smith apple green, which, although it could be lovely in certain situations, is not really my kind of colour. So we will be going with the Lemon Yellow and Zoisite mix. So now I've decided which ones are going in the palette. I'm going to pour the tube paints into these little plastic half pans and then on the bottom of each one I'm going to stick um, these are from the magnet shop on Etsy <laughs> I'm going to stick one of these little self-adhesive magnetic dots and that will just secure it in the metal palette so they won't move around too much so I think that's the next thing we'll do and then I think I might actually create some artwork with these gorgeous colours Even though this is a small painting, I knew it was going to take me quite some time to complete due to the level of detail, so I decided I wouldn't film the entire process. I basically masked off the borders and then sketched out a very simple composition without any detail, which is generally how I like to work. And then I filled in the background area with Schmincke Horridam Perylene Green, which is one of my new favorite colors i think it's so dark and moody and it's a really interesting color with a lot of depth so i thought that would be good for the background so i did that off camera and let it dry so that i could then just concentrate on painting the bird and the branch and all the leaves and so on I decided to use my lemon yellow and zoisite mix for these leaves so that they could really stand out against the dark background. I also had a lot of fun working wet in wet on the bird itself. I wasn't actually planning to have the paint um, running like this. I was imagining it with more defined edges, but I really liked the effect when it accidentally did it the first time a bit earlier on. So I decided to just kind of work with that. I'm finding that with watercolour, I'm having to like give up some of the control I would normally have if I'm working in acrylic or gouache, because watercolour sometimes just wants to do its own thing. But if you allow it to do that, you can sometimes get the most fantastic results. And I really loved how the colours on the bird were all kind of blending with each other and you don't have this really defined outline. I mean, you'll see later that I actually, I'm going to add a lot of details on top of the bird. So I wanted at least some of the bird to be quite loose and then I tighten it up with the details later on. So although I used the greens palette as a starting point for this piece, I actually ended up mixing in paints from my main palette and my night palette. 
um, and I even used a little bit of acrylic ink. I use FW acrylic ink in white for a lot of the details. So the little um, details on the leaves and on the branch and so on, and later on on the bird itself as well. At this point you can also see that I've added a metallic moon. This was um, from my handmade watercolour collection, although this one is in my night palette. Um, and I also decided that I wanted to add more leaves over the top of the background. And of course in watercolour you can't really do that, so I needed a more opaque medium. So I chose my acrylic gouache. I hadn't quite finished at this point, I've still got quite a bit to do, but I wanted to take the tape off because I don't like it being on there too long. I find the longer it's on there, the more chance that it's going to rip the paper when you take it off. So I decided at this stage I didn't really need it on there any longer, so um, I decided to peel it off. You can see at this stage that I've actually trimmed the border a little bit. The tape did in fact rip the paper at the edge so I just trimmed the edges off so that it was nice and neat. I gave myself a big enough border so if this happened I would be able to save it so it's a good thing I did that. But yeah I'm at the stage now where I'm adding all of the details onto the bird and this is quite a lengthy and laborious process. It's fun, but it takes some time. So I've really just cut this footage to make it much, much quicker. In reality, this part always takes quite a long time. I like to add lots of details. But yeah, here he is finished, my little night bird. I absolutely love the colour of that background and the metallic copper moon really works well with that green as well. So yeah, this is my artwork inspired by my greens palette. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and that it's managed to inspire you in some way too. Thank you for watching and I will see you again soon in another video.